So for more on the fallout from the president's uh, debate performance, I want to bring in CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian. Nicole, I feel like it's been an awful long time since I got a chance to talk to you. We know that President Biden has been reaching out to some congressional members. Some of these are, people would be people that have seen how he operates behind the scenes when he's not on the debate stage. Who has he been calling and what can you tell us about these conversations? Well, we know that President Biden did speak with Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries yesterday, as well as Delaware Senator Chris Coons. Of course, those are both key allies of the president. But uh, the conversations are notable nonetheless, uh, simply because we continue to hear uh, this clamoring, uh, particularly more so among rank and file House Democrats expressing concern about uh, the president's viability in this race. Of course, just yesterday, you saw Congressman Lloyd Doggett put out a statement becoming the first sitting Democrat to call on the president to withdraw. So some of this is aimed at just trying to uh, quell some of those concerns. Uh, but at the same time, you know, a lot of members tell us that uh, they just haven't seen that type of outreach yet from the president, from the White House, from the campaign, even as the campaign and the White House say that they are uh, trying to reach out to lawmakers to uh, address whatever concerns they may have. Yeah, you talked about this letter that's circulating. Uh, certainly there are some House Democrats that are vulnerable. They're facing tough re-election races. When we talked to Nancy Cor earlier today, she talked about some donors kind of bouncing around different names uh, that could possibly re replace President uh, Biden. You know, what are we to make of the state of the party right now? What does this say? Well, you know, to be frank with you, I'm having kind of a little bit of PTSD thinking about, you know, what happened to Kevin McCarthy uh, last fall. And now, you know, we're watching Democrats potentially contemplate the idea of throwing out the, their party leader, their standard bearer. So, uh, you know, I think it just goes to show in politics, sometimes anything can potentially happen. Now, granted, uh, we are not there just yet, but I don't think some of the frustration uh, that we have heard, uh, particularly among some lawmakers, can be understated here. Uh, we do know, as you uh, alluded to, there is a group of House Democrats, uh, mainly these vulnerable Democrats, frontliners that are uh, circulating a letter Letter, uh, calling on the president to transition. That letter has not officially uh, gone out, but it certainly is something that is of concern to the Biden campaign, uh, that they're hoping to blunt the momentum uh, in terms of that. But uh, that aside, you know, I have heard that Doggett may not be the only one to potentially come forward uh, calling on the president to withdraw. We've seen some congressional candidates do that. We've seen some former members do that. Um, so really, uh, that is why I think you are seeing this uh, extended outreach on the part of the president, certainly, and on the part of his aides, his staff, uh, to try to tamp this down if they can. And then in regards to the donors, you know you can't run a campaign without an awful lot of money. Um, what are we learning about what some of the donors might be saying and, and kind of like what's behind the strategy? Yeah, well, in terms of donors, uh, what we know from some of our reporting is that they, too, are expressing uh, frustration with the way in which not only uh, the president handled his debate performance, but, uh, you know, even the response thereafter. And so they, too, are having these kind of internal texts and calls and conversations about whether the president should remain as the nominee. You know, there has been some chatter about whether it should be Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, if she's the best uh, to uh, potentially replace the president or uh, whether that's drawing up some kind of a short list or going towards an open convention. Time is still a factor here. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. Uh, as we know, Democrats will be meeting for their convention later this summer, but actually have to nominate their candidate uh, before the convention actually takes place. So we are watching that timetable. That being said, you know, there are some reports that some donors are expressing more interest in uh, putting more money into some of these House and Senate races, but, you know, sources have told me in terms of that, uh, you know, they feel like donors should have always been investing in these House and Senate races. Mm -hmm. And they argue that a lot of these candidates are polling well ahead of the president. But I think the concern is whether or not that edge will be maintained. And so that's why there's a lot of trepidation around some of the polling and whatever it may show in some of these key races. Right. Uh, Nicole, thank you very much.